Oh, hi, it's Opie. Welcome back to Let's Play Katawa Shoujo. Last time we've had a just such a precious date with Lily-san. And uh yeah, we are back and a blackout. That's the title of our next uh segment here. Hmm, this is strange. That single thought has graced my mind a countless number of times since my life here began. It feels like an easy way to discard a troubling question, as if simply labeling something with those three words will make it go away. Or at least not worth thinking about, about any further. My life before my heart attack feels more blurry every time I try to remember it. And my mind struggles to keep up with all the events suddenly happening around me since. I heard somewhere that this is what it feels like to be left stranded in a country with the most basic understanding of a, the lo local language. Indeed, when I think about it, that seems a marvelously apt analogy for what's happened to me. But such situations are also supposed to make you very capable in that language very fast, as you are forced to learn it in order to survive. Put it another way, the situation becomes sink or swim. I wonder if I've really managed to swim after all this time. The exams are stressing me out a lot, even though they're finally coming to an end. But I've remained in Muto's favor, and I have some sort of direction for my future now. But I keep using that stupid meaningless phrase. This is strange. It really is amazing how fast one comes to accept being surrounded by people with sometimes incredibly jarring disabilities and conditions. So much so, that I really wonder why I feel so much like a foreigner. It certainly isn't for the lack of socialization or friends. I've come to know most of my classmates on first name terms, and know a few others around that, the school. Whether they are missing an arm or a leg, the students here are just like anyone else of their age. I can navigate the holes that I once lost myself in with the knees I had not expected to have or have, thanks to the school's logical layout, and can engage my teachers in comfortable discussion. I swirl around gently at the tea in my cup, the reflected image of my face becoming distorted by the moving liquid. This is strange. I used to hate drinking tea. Hmm, maybe I'm thinking too much. The familiar sound of china rattling from a teacup touching it in a company saucer rings out. Is something the matter? Don't worry, it's nothing. Oh, hi, you two. Oh, <laughs> hello. I take a long sip of the tea in front of me as the girls do. Just whiling away in the time in Lily's room, sipping tea with her in Hanako, feels familiar, almost nostalgic. So, uh, how's work? How's work? Your work in the newspaper club going, Hanako? I want to know it too. It sounds like it would be quite interesting. Hanako's face turns down at the attention placed upon her. Though her smile belies the fact that she genuinely likes being in the center of interest for the two of us. It's good. I think I'm getting better at it. Naomi and a couple of her friends handle most of the jobs, getting stories and stuff. I just do the computer things, like putting the stories together and getting it printed. It, it's nice, since I can sit and concentrate. I see Lily's low-tech nature isn't shared by Hanako. While sitting in a room compiling other people's newspaper articles into documents doesn't strike me as overly outgoing, it is heartening to see her widening cir her circle of friends. Baby steps, I guess. It's probably a bit much to be expecting her to become a socialite like Lily. How are you finding Naomi? I heard she could be quite troublesome at times. And Lily's going into her mothering mode over Hanako. Letting go of her is something she's had to learn. Hanako scratches her cheek, thinking on her answer. Uh, no, Naomi's nice. She's a bit loud sometimes, and a bit tiring. But she's really helpful. Her friends are nice, too. That's wonderful to hear, Hanako. I'm glad you found a source of such enjoyment. Lily's smile is warm and genuine, but I can sense a touch of wistfulness to it as well. Hanako seems to miss that entirely, but I don't think for a second that I'm imagining it. I suppose it's because I've slowly come to pay more and more attention to everything going on around me. 
with things seemingly happening faster and faster, it feels like I'll miss something if I'm not as observant as possible. With the exams, my newfound love life, trying to fit in some studying regarding my options for college and university, and my heart condition implying the brakes on everything that it irritatingly random times, my brain's been in overdrive recently. Makes me appreciate the rare quiet times such as these. I guess this is why Lily came to appreciate her weekly walks to the convenience store with and her tea parties with Hanako, despite her like of being surrounded by others. They give her a moment of peace in a chaotic and busy life. Oh, thank God the exams are over. Eh? The comment draws an earnest chuckle from both of the girls. It seems like everyone's been a lot happier since the exams ended last week. So, what are you doing? F what are you doing for the summer high holidays, Hanako? Only... I quickly count the days in my head. Today's Monday, and school finishes on Saturday. Five days to go, after all. I was thinking of traveling just around a bit. There's a lot of places I want to see, and I think I have enough money to pay for the bus and train rides. Naomi and one of the other girls in the newspaper club said they might come along, too. Her look indicates that she's given, a, she's given the matter quite a lot of thought. I'm kind of surprised that she's compli complimenting something like this. It seems that she's become intent on striking out on her own. Is there anywhere in particular that you're thinking of going? I was thinking that Kyoto sounds nice. I, I think I'll try to go a few places, though. Lily nods in approval, happy with Hanako's plans. While I cast my eyes to Lily, I refrain from her, from asking her the same question. She's been uh, evasive with her plans for the future for a long time now, but I never seem to get a good time to approach the subject alone with her. Every time it comes up in a conversation, it feels like she's either unsure of herself or simply dodging the question. Hmm, that's troubling. Be sure to call sometimes while, while you're out and about. I can give you my, I gave you my number before, right? Hanago gives a quick nod, a happy smile on her face. It's strange to see how happy people seem to become when they have a goal to work towards. Yuko seems to brighten whenever her university aspirations are brought up, and how Hanako is just the same. So why do I feel still feel this uncertainty? And why Lily too? Relationships can be really relationships really can be irritatingly troublesome sometimes. Oh, um, what what time is it? Oh, it takes me a second to remember that Lily's clock doesn't have any visual feedback. I really should know, given how many times I've been in her room. Nevertheless, I take my watch from my bag and quickly check it. The reason for her asking me is becoming clear. And it's about 20 past 10. Nearly curfew. Hanako rises to her feet, dusting herself off and kneading her gown after doing so. I better be going then. Good night, Lily. Hiss out. Sleep well, Hanako. See you tomorrow. With that, she walks to the door and quietly makes her exit. Silence. Phew. This seems to be happening more and more between Lily and me recently. After a few seconds, I finally find something to talk about. Oh yeah, I talked to Muto on Friday and finally checked out some guides on college and how to apply for it. That's good news. If you're going to be applying for colleges, I assume you had some idea in mind what you would be might do in the future. <sighs> I think I've settled on becoming a science teacher. It's going to take a while to get through university and everything to be qualified, but I think it'll be worth it. Lily's face brightens considerably at the news. I suppose with her wish to become a teacher, she's delighted I'd take the same kind of path. So you've decided a career on teaching. I think that path suits you most excellently, Hisao. I smile and nod. This time, even if I know she can't see me doing so, I know she feels it. I imagine Moto would have taken the, to the news as well. Oh, uh, that's one word for it. Uh, hey, Lily. Yes? I know you want to be a teacher, but... For a second, I wonder whether I should really ask her the question that was on my mind. But that's quickly brushed aside by the fact that this is rather late to have a second thoughts. Surely you don't think I'd be offended by something regarding my blindness. 
Her accusing tone is betrayed by her grinning face. Amused by my, at my awkwardness in raising the topic, some things never change. Hmm, good point, I guess. I was just thinking whether or not to being blind would be a hindrance with what your ambition is to become a teacher and all. She looks mildly surprised before giving the question as some thought. I refuse to think that she's never she's never actually pondered this issue before. Hmm. I wonder. Isao, could you close your eyes for a moment? Okay. Raising an eyebrow, I, I do as she requests. And then she hits me with a fucking baseball bat. <laughs> no. Uh, then how will she know? How will she see and where she's going to swing? Jeez. Or maybe she does. She does see. Hmm. I have no idea what she has in mind. And, the question, and my questions only increase as I peek out from one eye. Oh, hey, no cheat. You're cheating. Taking the black ribbon she usually wears in her hair. From the cabinet beside her bed, she advances towards me while running it through her fingers to remove any stray hairs remaining on the piece of cloth. I suddenly click onto her intentions as I feel the black strip make contact with my face, wrapping around my head and over my eyes. Um, what exactly is this for? It's a little test, Hisao. Seem since you seem to be wondering, I'll let you see things as I do for a time. Huh? Oh, so this is what it's, this is about. To be honest, this actually sounds kind of fun. Childish and rather silly to anyone who become, who would be watching, but a bit silly fun never hurt anyone. I stand a bit with a heave, my hands quickly moving out in front of me to warn me of my any obstacles. Okay, now what? Now, touch me. Well, if you say so, now then. I slowly make my way forward to the, towards the sound of Lily's voice. My walking speed could barely be be even called a shuffle. My entire experience feeling alien enough that I don't want to risk inadvertently tripping over everything, anything, such as her table or her haphazard piles of books. Something soft yet solid brushes against my left leg. Further inspection reveals it to be Lily's bed. I move onwards, finding myself thankful that Lily's room is so neat and tidy. Even the piles of books she has are generally kept close to the wall, well out of harm's way. The hard wall pressing against my outstretched hands makes me furrow of my brow in frustration. Hey Lily, where are you? What are you doing over there? I'm over here. Lily's voice comes from, other, from the other side of the room, from far from where it was before, even to my untrained ears. If she's going out of her way to avoid me reaching her, then this is just a game to her? Of course it is, compared to a life where even the concept of sight is an abstract one. A few minutes of a, in a blindfold are nothing. Uh, I guess she's made her point. She's more than capable of navigating her room. And further, I've seen how independent she is even when compared to many of the others in Yamaku. Well, even if this is just a game, I may as well play it wholeheartedly. With the pace much quicker than before, I moved towards the source of her voice, definitely sidestepping the table in the center of her room, thanks to remembering its position. Mm, I got you now. She gives an impish giggle, one just long enough to work out that she's just that she's passing just beside me. I quickly turn around to face the new direct <laughs> The table wasn't there before. Ow, ow, ow! <laughs> Oh, mm. I slowly sit up next to the table, raising my blunt phone as I rub my aching head. I give it an ir irritated kick to the table that's just sitting in front of the where I fell. Utterly pointless, but the thing deserved it. Yes, Al. Well, he's still standing just to my side. Obviously, I'm sure of what's befallen me. Sorry, uh, sorry, I kind of fell over. Are you hurt? Uh, my head hurts, but I'm thinking I'm okay. I think the table moved in order to trip me over. She giggles as she walks over and takes the seat beside me, her hand resting on my own. I suppose that's the end of that, then. I don't think so. But also, I get I think I get the point. Though I do wish it hadn't involved such a headache. Lily suddenly looks blank. Point. And I return an extraordinary flat look. That was just for fun? I thought it... I just thought it might ease you up a little about the subject. You always seem to tiptoe around it after all. In regard to teaching, sight isn't that important. There are plenty of classes taught by entirely blind teachers. 
They have more than enough resources for me to learn the subject. It's as simple as that, really. I slump my shoulders and give a snort of amusement. Yeah, I understand. I guess we'll both have. I guess we'll both just have to work hard to reach our goals then. Hmm. What is it? Oh, the music stop stopped. <laughs> What's going on here? With a little hesitation, Lily pushes forward her chin and closes her eyes in an unmistakable gesture. Yeah, there we go. I accept gladly, her lips touching. As they do, I sp suddenly feel her hand snaking off of my chest from underneath my shirt. The feeling of her hand against my bare skin is enough to make my heart suddenly accelerate. Mmm, so she's in that kind of mood again. Oh, this, this barley might get cut out. <laughs> yep. Well, I'm no hardly one to complain. So she does genuinely like this, and even with all my medications, my libido is thankfully still intact. I lean into, kiss, into the kiss further, holding her hand tightly as I feel the tracing the contours of my chest. Eventually, we break off from one another. The room's silent from our, but from our breathing. He's out. Yeah? I don't suppose you can wear the blindfold again? Her tentative suggestion takes me by surprise. I suppose she wants us she wants to introduce me to sex through her eyes as well. Or just wants to find out what I'd be like during the act while hampered by the blindfold. With a measure of unease tampered by curiosity, I do as she says and lower the blindfold over my eyes. The the, the world becomes dark once again. I reflexively tense as I feel Lily's hand gently brush the side of my face, entirely unable to anticipate her touch. I really need to get more used to contact like this, even after the weeks we've been going out. It isn't as natural for me as it, for, as it is for her. Silence? Hey, Lily. Shh. I obediently follow her instructions and quietly listen, trying to make out something, anything, that's happening around me. Compared to before when I was chasing Lily, I, the need to carefully navigate the room's obstacles is now gone. I can take my time and concentrate much harder on listening. It takes a while, but I can... It takes a while, but I can eventually pick out the soft sound of her breathing in the otherwise dead silent room. <sighs> so, mm, I think this might be cut out, guys. If an image comes up, then yes, I will cut this out. Sadly enough, yeah, I could. Yeah, I know there's a thing I said I would I could read not show but read what's going on but uh due to YouTube being a bitch towards me I'm not taking that chance unfortunately so yeah sorry about that yeah some yeah I think there were certain pe I had like thumbs down on certain scenes because of that but so I'm not going to sorry guys but eventually maybe uh, if I have time I can post this on another <clears throat> certain website the scenes in and out in and out measuring it by my own against my own breathing I realize it's definitely deeper than normal especially for her. another sound makes it way to my ears one that I can't identify immediately I don't think I've heard it before but my heart skips a beat when I realize the source, my hand almost reflexively reaching out towards it. Her face feels softer than usual under my touch. Her head just barely turning in acknowledgement towards the fingers on her cheek. He out. I gulp and take a moment to try to calm down. I need all the concentration I can muster when I'm like this in order to fully take in my surroundings. After a few deep breaths, I think I've managed to collect myself with a touch so light that it wouldn't disturb a feather. I started to move my hand towards down her body. Ugh. I can feel my sand. I can feel myself losing focus again, thanks to those thin silken pajamas of hers resting so perfectly over the curves of her body. If she's like this, then that means that she has to be sitting against her bed and facing me. Now, to continue. Alright, this must be her hip. I could just move slowly downwards. While his breath catches as my hand comes over hers, tentatively following her fingers between the, her legs and losing them as they go underneath her underwear. Just the slightest moisture tucks much touches my fingertips, but it's enough to easily work out what she's doing. Ugh, my mind suddenly fills the, with visions of what she must be like in front of me right now. I never ima even imagined her doing this before. And being unable to see her doing the act only enhances the mood. 
I worked the blindfold upwards, brushing out of my eyes and a couple of hairs that were stuck to the ribbon before. For a period of, for a period of time, I can only guess that my mind goes completely blank. All I can do is stare at my newly freed eyes and taking everything in front of them. There we go. And that is that, ladies and gentlemen. Fortunately, that is the cutoff point. I will rejoin you guys back once the deed has been done. Yeah. Okay, so we're back. Uh, during the skipping of the scene, uh, I encountered something that was a huge uh, development. Uh, so I was like, oh shit. So I had to reload the save and stop over here so we could continue. It's not showing anything, thankfully, but, uh, yeah, something big happens here. More. I want more. I can feel my chest... T I can feel my chest tightening as we... as I rock back and forth frantically, both of us entirely taking with ourselves. Nothing... that unusual. I just need to take deeper breaths to steady... myself. This feeling is just... Normal. Uh, uh, this is I can't. This pain is too much. Uh, <laughs> I stumble up backwards from Lily with unseemly haste, clumsily hitting the back of my foot against the table and falling into the ground with an unsummarious crash. He hits the table again. Jesus. No, this is not like some fucking climax or anything. He just, that fucking heart condition just came at the wrong time. Breathing quietly, I frankly scrape at the ribbon over my eyes as I lay my back. I have to get this off. I have to get this off. For a moment, everything goes blank as the rust of newfound lights insults my eyes. My breathing slows from the brink of hyperventilation. Seconds pass, and I carefully measure out the rhythm of my heartbeats with every ounce of concentration I can muster. My heart is normal. It's back to normal. My body feels utterly bizarre as I lay dazed on the floor looking at the ceiling. The adrenaline from before is still pouring through my veins, but my mind is completely exhausted. Ugh, I prop myself up as I hear Lily getting off the bed and coming towards me. Hisso, are you okay? Hisso! I'm fine, Lily. I'm fine. She gives a sigh of relief, her worried expression collapsing. Her face afterwards is the very last I wanted to see from her. It's a face I, dest I detested when I first saw my parents in the hospital all those months ago. Pity. The lily pities me. Ugh. I just close my eyes and turn away, powerless. I feel like throwing up. I can, feel the, I can hear the sound of Lily moving away quickly and tending to herself, the ruffling of her clothing being pulled back on after a moment of searching, just barely audible. Sorry. She slowly shakes her head as she finishes bunning her up, up her top. Her kind smile looks so fragile, so delicate, it makes my heart sink. Approaching carefully, she feels out the edge of the low table before taking a seat next to me, putting her arms around my chest. I'm sorry, Sal. I shouldn't have put my desires down to you. No, 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 no. It's nothing like that. It's just my heart condition came at the wrong time, man. This fucking heart condition, man. You don't need to apologize. I'd be normally be fine, but you've seen that much before. I guess I should have tried to push myself so far. My eyelids feel heavy, calmly sitting next to her. Like this, this is probably letting the adrenaline work itself out of my system. They're letting my mind relax. So that's why you never took the lead? <laughs> yeah, I guess it's a good thing that you like to, huh? The joke seems to lighten her expression a little. In fact, which helps me feel a little less uneased about my unreliable self. Lily's head comes to rest on my shoulder as I struggle to keep my eyes open. With more difficulty after each blink, I feel completely drained. It's okay, so. It's all okay. <laughs> I couldn't get the job done. <laughs> no sooner than she says this in a small, quiet tune escapes her lips. Entirely too tired to think. All I can do is listen to her soft humming. It's it's a soft, almost melancholic tune. 
It sounds familiar, but the more I try to remember the its origin, the less I seem to be able to concentrate. Maybe she's humming that thing like the 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 chime, like the music box. Yeah, the music box, right? The feeling and scent of her head gently resting on my shoulder and her warm body against my side are soothing. The soft humming of her voice, too, relaxes my mind as her, much of her warmth relaxes my muscles. A singular quiet moment, after all this fracas makes me realize just how exhausted I've become. I feel my eyelids slowly become heavier and heavier. Even with the chaos of before, I wish this moment would last forever. Lily and I together, sharing a single solitary occasion together, just as we used to. But if that's the case, why does she feel further away than she's ever felt before? Oh boy. Hmm. That's, that's, that's concerning. <laughs> the loud clatter of books falling into the return slot abruptly breaks the grip of silence over the school library. It's become a habit for me to come into the library at least once a week. Not only does this the reading itself keep me busy, but discussing books with Hanako and Lily also does. I obviously startled Yuko suddenly twists towards the direction of the noise. I'd have thought of her thought her used to people dropping books by now, since she does work here. Oh holy Lily, is so I'm back again. It takes me a moment to respond, my mind still distracted by the familiar melody of Lily's humming that's hardly left my ears as in the several days it's been since I fell asleep to it. Hmm? Mm, oh, yeah, uh, uh, just returning some books I borrowed. She casts her eyes downwards, presumably to the bend of the books she dropped to. You're a very heavy reader, aren't you? It's become a routine now, as is the time at least. I wish I had free time to pass. From small tech to desperate depression in less than five seconds. I think that's a new record for her, since she seems a bit down in general today, even compared to normal. Considering she has worked to d she has to work two jobs just to support herself, I can see how that would take a toll on her lifestyle. Come to think of it, the pay of her job here can't all can't be all that bad. The idea of staff in such a prestigious private school going hungry strikes me as counterintuitive. Uh, working two jobs must take a lot of time. I probably never, I probably never manage it. You're lucky being a student. Do you think out you'll be able to go into university? If she's asking, I guess then I guess that's just the that's the expected result of having this kind of education. Private schools like this don't exactly come cheap. I guess I have the money. I think. I've got plans which will require going into one, and my grades are good enough. It's more the matter than I'll ha of how I'll pay to do so. University costs so much that I'm having to work two jobs to avoid to enter it. Paying for ex daily expenses that too that makes it a lot harder. If you're if you're reading this much, though, that means you'll be doing well in school, right? Sorry for the pause there. Inter interesting logical jump. Not an altogether wrong one, though. I suppose so. I didn't, I didn't find any of the exams very hard, aside from maybe one or two. Do you mind if I ask what studies you're pursuing in university? Hugo appears to be genuinely bright, genuinely bright at that question. If... <laughs> uh... Sorry, that one, that first word really got th thought me of that song. That freaking song. Damn it, Lyra. Anthropology. <laughs> to be specific, I'm specializing in the history of classical era in in theon and in civilization and democracy. Uh, she really seems to know her stuff. Such enthusiasm is to be admired, and it's nice to see her genuinely excited about something. I guess even somebody like Yuko can be happy if she has a visible road ahead of her. That's good to hear. If you, both of us, some, both of us jump at the sudden interruption coming from my pocket. Oops. Apologizing profusely and quickly shuffling into the hallway, as I fumble with the cover of my mobile phone, I glance at the screen. Weird. It's a mobile number I don't recognize, considering I can count the number of people with the number on one hand. I really wonder whether it's some telemarketer then locked out. Hello? Is Al Nakai speaking? 
Jeez, pick on faster next time. Anyway, guess who? It only takes me a second to recognize the distinctively deep, brusque voice. Oh, it's Misha. Hey, Misha, I didn't expect you to call me. Huh? Huh? You actually think I sound like here? Uh, not at all, Akira. I don't remember you giving you my number, though, so I thought I messed with you. Oh, that. I got Lily to give it to me. Not hard. She positively brims with pride at the statement. She's trying to get me caught up in the pair pace. I know it. I suppose it, I shouldn't be surprised that the two would share my number, though, given how close they are. So, what's up? You free right now? I guess. Why? Could you meet me at the park in town? I just want to talk to you about some stuff. Stuff. Is that an invitation to a date? What? Uh, of course not. She sounds cr suddenly crestfallen, her previously teasing nature having instantaneously left. It seems strange for her. Anyway, I don't see why not. Where do you, when do you want to meet? Kind of... I wish... Wait, right now? But it's... The dead silence suddenly coming from the phone announces that the fact that she's unsummarily hung up. For a long time, I just stand there, staring at the call ended message on my screen, while replaying the conversation in my head. What the hell, Akira? Throwing a glance up and down the street, across the road, step in, and step into the park. I learned to pace myself on such walks, mostly because lower, slightly slower speed during their forays into town means I have to constantly slow myself down. That aside, I hope Akira didn't expect me to be immediately prompt. Oh, hi. Oh, nice picture here. Sweet. It only takes a couple of seconds to spot her, waiting on a bench with a can of beer in her hand. The look she gives me as I, wa as I walk up lacks any hint of acknowledgement or agreement. <sighs> What's with that look? I ain't, I need to have come, you know. I knew you would. You're that kind of person, after all. I lower my brow to her remark as she disposes of the can, empty by the time I arrived, and the metallic clatter rings out. Akira takes a seat on the old wooden bench, and I follow her lead. She takes another can of beer from beside her and opens it before speaking, taking in a large gulp. She seems to really like that stuff. I suppose I don't need to ask what this is all about, or rather, who it's about. I heard from Lily that you ask about her family. Should they share phone more than phone numbers? That's for sure. I'd probably be very worried right now if it weren't for a total lack of malice in her voice. Rather, her tones almost sounds almost wistful. Uh, idle curiosity, mostly. I have to admit, I never have guessed you two were half Scottish. She gives a wry chuckle of amusement. I've heard that before, trust me. The small smile falls from her face, her eyes looking ahead distantly. Aside of her, from her occasional elderly couple talking as they slowly walk the mendering paths on the odd aging card, it's pleasantly quiet. She didn't tell you everything, though, did she? It was pretty brief. Your parents live in Scotland, and she hasn't met them since she was 12. And she wants to meet them again. It always surprised me how devoted she is to her parents. For all they, the good they did to us. The way she says it sounds almost derisive. Derisive. Uh, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. She gives a small sigh as if to quickly brush the feelings away. Why do you think they left, Hal? Why do you? Why do I think they left? <sighs> hmm. From what Lily told me, it was because of work. I guess a pretty decently paying job was involved as well. Given the parent, given the way your parents seem to live, so Lily went to a private school, and that's why she carries herself with the airs and graces of the upper class. Yeah, since the big business in Inverness boomed, her father decided to move directly to the same city as his headquarters. That's just a conclusion I thought you'd come to, though. You're too good-natured. You don't think they left for their career, do you? I'm sitting here bitching you to you about it. What do you think? Yamaku Academy? I've always felt that place was kind of creepy. Like it was an isolated hideaway from those proper society that don't want to see nor hear. They probably just ruled the fact that Lily wasn't old enough to be shoved there by the time they left. A long silence follows her abrupt and very harsh criticism of her own parents and Yamaku. 
Lily's blindness is hardly something that could be simply ignored for a high-class family attempting to keep up appearances, much less so when the lucrative offer is on the table. Eventually, when Akira gives in a derisive snort, Felix comes toward. No, I for I, <laughs> uh, moving moving to a secure and far financial future with this new job posting. Even at the time, I've hardly believed it. Not in wanting to this simply be an avenue for inventing, I gently tried to steer their discussion. So you stayed in Japan with Lily then? Either I stayed with her, or she went to live with an ailing grandmother and grandfather. But what about Shizune's family? If you're cousins, then... My fathers hate each other. I'd be more than happy to tell them to go screw themselves and live with them anyway, but Lily would have wanted that. I also had an offer for a job by then, so we did our best to keep our parents' houses in proper shape and try to continue our lives as they've never left. So you just lived by yourselves? Basically, Lily had school and I had my job, so we weren't exactly languishing. With her schooling, her study, and having to do chores while I worked, though, I can't help feeling like I failed her. In the end, I tried to be there for her and screwed it up. Expecting a 19-year-old to be a mother for a blind child is ridiculous. So, Lily and Akira lived alone after her parents moved, with Lily largely taking care of herself? I guess that explains her apparent independence and compared to many in Yamaku. I may have lived alone in much of the time since my parents both worked, but that's just something else near entirely. Sorry to make you listening to my moaning, Sal. I don't mind at all, but... Do you mind if I ask why you're telling me all this? Hmm. <laughs> you always were curious. Context, I suppose. Life is in a fairy tale, Sal. Some people have to learn the hat the hard way. She takes a long drink from the can in her hand, her face becoming more depressed and distant. I broke up with my boyfriend a few days ago. After I leave, we're not going to be able to see each other again. But that's how life is. You can't just set up your life up and expect it to stay that way forever. Sometimes stuff happens and you have to roll with, even if it means hurting yourself or others. She takes a long breath before looking up at the bright orange sky. Damn. Damn, even if I smoked, I could have taken a nice long drag right about now and looked kind of cool. I want to respond to help her in whatever way I can, but I feel utterly useless. This kind of situation is one I've never been in, and I simply don't have the experience to say anything meaningful to comfort her. Akira looks over and infinitely picks up on his, this, much to my embarrassment. I must look pretty pathetic right now, whining about this to someone I barely know. Harley, and I'm pretty much an expert on looking pathetic. She gives a chuckle, the act of feeling like an impersonal victory for me. You're a good kid, is how. When I said I approved of you with being my sister, I wasn't joking or being nice. She picks up her. She picks herself up from the seats with a grunt, one that was one that seems ill-fitting given her age, and throws the now empty can into the bin after one last swig. It's just unfortunate that it doesn't really count for much in this world. When I said I was leaving for Scotland, I was doing it because it, a good position opened up in our company's headquarters. When your folks told me that we were in, we were at their place, though, they also gave Lily a summons to rejoin them in Inverness. No, no way! Her evasiveness when asked about her future, the awkwardness that had steadily grown between us, that uncharacteristic outburst of anger. All of them suddenly fit into place. The same family that she reminisced about have, about after Hanako's birthday party. The same family that had left her and Akira to themselves after taking flights to greener pastures. <sighs> now that I feel stupid for never cornering li literally on what was bothering bugging her. I never even considered if something had happened during her trip to her family's house at Inverness. And now a sense of unease grows in my chest. If her family has summoned her to rejoin them in Scotland, all the way to the other side of the earth. Uh, has she accepted? Lily hasn't told me whether she plans to accept, and it seems that she hasn't told you either. That's why I called you down here to talk you out. Context, huh? I sat back, my feelings of worry and frustration no doubt written all over my face. 
Lily's a strong person, you know, but she's not infallible. I guess it's my job to worry about her being her older sister, but I think you deserve to know. I understand. You okay? You sound depressed. No, I'm just thinking. That's good. Thinking is good. Being rash won't get you anywhere. She looks at her watch, barely moving her wrist. I got to go. Will you be okay? I'll be fine. Don't worry. I'll have to talk to Lily about it and get everything sorted out. She gives a smile, but doesn't feel all that genuine or sincere. Really, both of us are dancing around the fact that Lily is on the purpose of the biggest decision of her life and is trying to take the entire burden on herself. And part of that burden is the matter of our relationship. By the time I look up, Akira is already walking off with her hand held up. For the first time in a long while, I finally have an answer to something. Perhaps not even that, but at least I now have the right to, question to ask. Will you leave or stay? Oh, I didn't... So, this is getting very interesting. Holy shit. But oh, wow. Unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it here. Ooh, it's raining. That's crazy. Anyways, thank you for watching. And uh, next time on Let's Play uh, Katawa Shoujo. I don't know how long this is going to be. But hopefully soon this we're getting to the end. But uh, yeah, see you guys then. This is getting really interesting.